Hey guys, Justin here with Rampanga Nation, and I'm here with... Uh, I'm Elise Davis. Okay. Oh. Uh, and what did you do today? Uh, I got top 16 at the Pro Play Tour, uh, Invitational. Unfortunately, couldn't uh, break that top cut curse after the first time I was able to get in top cut, but uh, still did well. Still really liked the deck I played, and it was a decent event for me overall. What did so. you play? I played Extravagant Spirals. Uh, the Ooh. deck was... Yeah. The deck was insane. Cause Sounds like, insanely expensive. Oh, I uh, borrowed like some of the most expensive cards in the deck. Like I've had to borrow two souls, three of the extravagance, two of the Appaloosas. Oh, uh, not, what, not a fun time. What'd you lose to in uh, Top Cut? Uh, I lost to the mirror match, just game one. Uh, he just had the nuts. I opened like really bricky because I had like master plan, terraforming field spell, and then like Two other cards that weren't going to progress my game state enough to try and break the board. And then game two, I had like double super agent, sleeper, master plan again, and then trap card. I had to resolve agent and I didn't, but he had the like dark ruler and evenly anyway, so I probably would have lost. But it's what it is, it happens. Like, you know, shit. Let's get into the deck profile. Yeah, alright. So we play three spiral souls. It's magician souls. It's basically a spiral card, let's be real. But I mean it's the most broken card in the deck. That's why this deck is good. Like this there's nothing else I can say about that. Like the confliction doesn't come up too much with extravagance. It very rarely, so I think it's still really amazing and you just it works. Um three agent, so we play our deck a little bit more mid-rangey, so three agents fine because a lot of the time we just summon this off of Sleeper because we go, uh, our end board is Appaloosa Dweller Sleeper, so we need to have access to like 2-4 somehow and a lot of the time that's how you do it, so multiple is perfectly fine. Um, two Master Plan just, like, if we draw it, it's not awful and then we can still resolve souls. Um, like, yeah, like like I said, it bricked me in top 16, but logically, it isn't that bad like to play it too, so I think it's still perfectly fine. Would I don't you, think it's incorrect. Would you consider doing one plan one Apprentice Illusion Magician? Maybe, but like the thing is, is Apprentice doesn't like, I feel like it doesn't give you the same advantage, and I'd still just rather like play the second of this because I feel like Magician Souls doesn't do as much as you would like to that Master Plan would. I might be wrong, but uh... Yeah, no, I still like two uh, master plan. Uh, then for the one of quick fix drones, sleeper, last resort, and tough. I wish I could have fit more or like sided one more. Like the card is really good, but the thing is, I saw it whenever I needed it. It wasn't hard to get to. So at the same time, I think one was fine. It only mattered when I was in like really grindy situations, and I just needed like one more in my deck just to have when I was like almost out of resources. But otherwise. Like one tough is normally fine, I Basically think. Basically play four copies of it though, with like Rota, Terra, Resort. And top right. Card. And like and like this isn't as good as Agent just like for the fact that you can't just special summon it freely. So it's just it's a little bit more awkward, but I think it's still like tough is amazing. I love tough so much. I wish I could play three, but uh that's not this format. <laughs> And then for hand traps, we play three droll and one crow. This is also why the deck's expensive, because uh we max rarity out here. But no, um one thing I really want to do, with the, or we really want to do with the deck too, is make sure we have the, at least some form of hand trap at the main deck. Because like with some of the more combo heavy variants that like ended on like the tri gate board and everything, you couldn't fit the drolls as easily. But like with this version of the deck, it's really easy to fit. And with extravagance, we can draw it. And if we don't combo, we just have like defense for the next turn. So I think the card's amazing. Then we play the level one XYZ, so Crow is fine. Uh, that's it for the monsters. For the uh, spells. Three pot of extravagance. This card was amazing. Tell him, Justin. Yeah, that card's really nice. Uh, I like it personally too because when they drone you, you get to see all three of cards they drone anyway. Because uh, so they would sack like the battle one, but say you have outs in your deck like ruler and stuff, you can draw all the cards because of extravagance. Right. So it's just like this card just not only increases your consistency, it also just. I don't know, it's just amazing. It, like, the increased consistency makes so you can play through boards easier yeah. or just, like, stockpile later. That's why I said, like, this is, like, a really mid-rangey deck, so you don't focus on, like, super combo heavy, and it's just perfect. And we Also, play, like, you can, like, still, uh, Princess Sprite under it because it excavates, yeah. Right, and, like, I don't know. It does not conflict that much with everything else. It's just the pure consistency of it was too broken, so I 
I love this version of the deck. I think it's way better than the regular one. Uh, three where are foul, you kind of have to. Uh, three goods. This is also another thing that was like good to draw extravagance that made it to like. I know like some of the super heavy combo variants don't play as many of this because they just rely on souls, but if we draw this and like draw it off extravagance, we can still resolve souls just fine, don't have to worry about those conflictions. So I think this card is really insane. Um, and then three call by the grave, you kind of have to. Uh, yeah. Um, Draw, yeah. And it, it's also just really good defensively. Like I just like that card in general right now. I think that card's just insane right now. But uh, two big red, I think this is standard, right? No, most people play one, but I agree that two is good. Yeah, it, especially in grindy situations. Yeah, especially with like this version of the deck, you need two, and like it just comes up so much, and you can easily search both on your first turn. Yeah. So I think it's just amazing. Oh, and, yeah. Another yeah. thing, like when I went second with it, like you crack the board and use the first one to like grab back plan. Then your last quick fix once you grab the second one, so that like, next turn you can bring back Helix and like just still play. So right. So I, I like two for a lot as well. Yeah. No. This, it was really Ooh, nuts. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, play the one resort, the one terraforming. Uh, I kind of wish we could cut this, but we still need it. Like even if you draw it, you have so many plays to get it back in deck to resolve plans, so it's fine. Um, one mission or er, assault. Uh, one for one. This card's insane. Oh my god! So the person I played against the top sixteen uh, drew this in. I think like both of his games, or maybe just game two. But then the first time I ever played him was also a spiral mirror, and he drew it every time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's insane. It was a regional I met you at too. Yeah, that's it's a crazy pretty strong. Card. But yeah, one for one's insane. Uh, foolish, you have to. Rhoda, I almost tried to cut this card because original. Okay, so I actually have a reason why. So originally, this deck had Armageddon Knight, and we decided to cut that. And I'm like, well, we can already see Agent and Tough enough, so I like. So yeah, we're back. We had like a small interruption, but yeah, Roto. Shout out to Cody Angeloff, man. Just I mean, yeah, he's a creator of Elise. Oh, oh we'll, we'll get we'll get to that. Okay. He's not the actual, but yeah. Um, oh, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I so, Rhoda, I mean, it's standard, but we almost cut it, but you know, it, it's we we need it. And then uh, reborn, you have to. This card's insane, especially in America. Yeah, like this came up so much, so I'm happy with it. And then last card is just. Just to rescue, um, just because we weren't super combo heavy, we only needed like to resolve like sometimes even just one, and then you could just save the other one. But like it, I don't know. We just didn't need extra copies, and especially didn't want to draw it as much, just because if we draw extravagance, then it's a little bit more awkward to play with. So it's not awful, but it's not amazing. So I think two is like the perfect ratio for it. So that's it for the main deck. Uh, We'll go to the fun extra deck. <laughs> <laughs> so we play three double helix. That seems bad. So, I'm kidding. <laughs> Extravagant. <laughs> yeah, so you need to just make sure you keep one. Uh, the only time I banished three, I think, was in my feature match in round eight, game three. But, like, I also did it when I had to resolve multiple extravagance. Like, that happens, though. But, like, helix honestly isn't the most important thing in your extra deck because. It's so easy with like Magician Souls and everything else. You don't need to resolve Helix all the time. It's just nice to do so you can do like the extra things you need to do. But the most important card in the extra, actually, uh, I don't know. I think Blocker I, is the most I think important. this is one of the most important. Yeah. Rich Town, Rich Town, Three Appalooza. Um, not even prismatic. <laughs> you know, my name is not uh, Josh Bavardic, so I can't be <laughs> that rich. <laughs> right, so Three Appalooza is an extravagant right? Yeah, and like, this is just one of the most important things so you need to do that I think oh uh, wait one question oh. you've made like have you ever like made multiples in a match like where they crack your board and then like use the first one or the second like the I, next I had to do that like once or twice so it so yeah it, 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 it comes, comes up. up but like I think if you're not playing extravagance you still should only play one because like you have other extra cards that can like build a board anyways That's true. and just in this like uh, circle of what I had access to, I needed to do that, but there's probably something else that could have been better. I can't necessarily... No, it would not be Boralode. It is not the same thing. Shut up, Justin. God damn it. Uh. <laughs> but... Justin, you want to tell everyone why Boralode's amazing? Yeah, I'll tell them in my deck. <laughs> Alright, fine. Sure, whatever. Um, I think this is the most important card in 
like one of the yeah. most important, but like Barricade Borg Blocker, I wish we could have played three because honestly, this is one of the ones I banished the most uh, along with the next card, but like this, this thing is just insane, especially with the interaction with Resort just to preserve it. Like, uh, uh, do you want to explain that better for people? Oh yeah, so Resort, uh, the maintenance cost for it, you have to shovel back a monster or it kills itself. You can choose not to shuffle back the monster so it just dies and then since you can choose in the end phase when your cards resolve uh you resolve the resort first and then since your barricade board blocker is already activated uh after the resort resolves you just add it back instantly and you just have resort for next turn and like you don't have to worry about it like getting destroyed or like targeted down and usually you don't need it on field after you already resolve your like put a sleeper on board so it's really nice <clears throat> But yeah, Barricade's insane. Like, I really wish we could have played three, but there's just no room. And like, Appaloosa's Helix, kind of more important. Uh, two Unicorn, also banished this a lot, but like, it only came up once or twice this weekend for me to shuffle back my resort, but like, you still need to have it just in case, because it comes up like that. Um, then the one Link Kribo and the one Boral Sword, uh, there's no reason to play more copies of these, so we just didn't. Um, a card we probably should have played more copies of is Abyss Dweller. Wait, did you play two? No, I played one. But, like, there's just no room, though, yeah, at the same time. Yeah, there's no like, room. Like, I wanted to play two for the combo, but you can't always even do the combo. Right. Like, sometimes, like, like Appaloosa for forward sleeper just carries. Right. But, like, the thing that made this deck, like, really good is the ability to end on this Dweller, because, like... Ending on Dweller Appaloosa Sleeper, most decks can't crack that. The only thing that, like, doesn't auto-lose to it is probably, like, Geist or Guru. And, like, we just beat those decks anyways if we resolve our board. And, like, yeah, you mentioned evenly, but, like, we can just stand by phase, do, do the Dweller, and, like, they're probably not having yeah, an easy time Yeah, since you can, like, stand by Dweller, you can play around Kaijus and Dark Ruler, which is really good, too. Right, so, and it leaves us with more cards in hand to do the combo the way we do it. So, like, it... It works out better, but like, I, I kind of wish we could have played two, but there's, yeah. And for the rank ones, um, I don't think I resolved this once this weekend, just because like, either A, I drew Crow a lot, or B, I was trying to be mindful of Nibiru, so I just let my quick fix go. Um, I maybe did Princess Sprite like once. Oh yeah, I Princess Sprite for a Reborn once. It was insane. <laughs> And I just like the interaction of Princess Sprite and Extravagant, so you can Princess Sprite under Extravagant still. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, because like, it's not drawing a card. Yeah, it's excavating. Well, you can add, you just can't draw. Yeah, so. that's, that's why yeah, it's like yeah. nice. So yeah, that card's pretty decent. But uh, onto the side deck, one Panker Tops, uh, mainly for just like the rank up decks. And like, it's just a good overall thing. Like this card's still amazing, even if it's just that one. Um, and then a card just Justin disagrees with uh, Ghost Reaper. I'm just kidding. This is Gamma Seal. Do you want to tell him about that, Justin? Uh, I <laughs> can't have my profile. It's fine. <laughs> no, but uh, it was just for uh, trying to crack spiral boards a little bit better when we're going second. Sure, you can hate it all you want, but it made sense because like if you get rid of like you just choose which problem card you need to get rid of, and then you can just crack the rest of the board really easily. So like it was pretty nice. Uh, and then two Dark Ruler, we only had room for two. It probably could have just been like that, but like the other cards were a little bit more important because like uh, they had a little more variance. So we only needed two, but probably should have played three somehow. Uh, three Twin, uh, this card is slightly necessary, but I think I only resolved it like once or twice. Please, Justin, tell us more about how much you loved Twin this weekend. I didn't play it. <laughs> Which you'll find out in his deck profile, but uh, three evenly, uh, you kind of have to. Like, it even does really well against combo decks, so like, this card's just insane. And then, uh, yeah, three judgments. Uh, this card's insane too. Like, you absolutely need this every time you're going first. Like, no matter what, what are you doing here, Cody? <laughs> you want to? Okay. All right. Well, that's well, actually I, perfect time. Cody, get do, over here. Do you want to do shout outs? Yeah. So first shout out goes to Cody right here. <laughs> so, oh, he's, <laughs> <laughs> so he's the one that gave me the list. He helped me with a lot of like theory and like a little bit of testing for this event too, just so I could like land on this. And uh, 
And biggest shout out to Herman Hansen because he's the one that actually made the list. Uh, we just made a couple tweaks after we got it, but like he laid all the foundation to like make this happen and the deck was really insane. So huge shout out to him and shout out to Cody, obviously. Huh? Oh. Huh? Okay, is what? any other shout outs? Yeah, no, I have more. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, so uh, then shout out to uh, all the people that went cards from uh, TGD Gaming. I was getting there! God. But yeah, shout so TGG Gaming lent me like a lot of the cards I needed. They're an amazing local. You should check them out if you live in Minnesota. They just opened up like six months ago, so check them out if you can. Uh, shout out to Josiah. He let me cards too, like the soul, all the expensive cards are went from people. So the souls I got from Josiah, the extravagance is one of the Appaloosas from TGG. And then Lang let me an Appaloosa and a Nightmare and I think some other stuff. Uh, all you guys are the goats. Lang's a huge testing partner of mine. He keeps me sane right now and he nice. Uh, and then shout out to Justin just for helping me do it. Like, oh, like a lot of like the testing for this event and trying to get my head straight to like go into this. Sorry. Fun fact, we almost played Arcus. <laughs> oh yeah, so my orc, you can't tell me my orcus list wasn't spicy. Yeah, it, it was pretty good. Yeah, but like it just, this deck was a yeah. million times Spiles better. Just but uh, yeah, no, uh, you helped me out a lot, Justin. I really appreciate it. You're awesome. Uh, shout out to Julie. Uh, you're amazing. I wish you were here this weekend, but oh well. Uh, shout out to Tian. He's always good support and whatnot. Uh, Shout out to Eric Cortez for driving me to the airport last night. Oh my god, Justin, let me just do my thing. <laughs> okay, now I think that's it. Um, right. Thanks, guys. Bye.